You know, let's get started. You guys ready? Yeah. All right, so you're here for the killer Facebook advertising <laughs> tactics. I love the word killer, and that's what I'm expecting to hear today. Uh, my name is Jim Kukrell, and I'm the moderator. I haven't done a ton of Facebook advertising, but that's probably why they picked me, because I will ask very good questions. And I expect a lot of good stuff from the panelists today. I expect inside tips, tricks, strategies, and everything they know about Facebook as much as they're willing to give, and I hope you will expect the same thing. We have um, a good 50 minutes to go. We're going to take questions at any time. You have to come up to the mic in the middle, in the middle of the room. Um, but the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to allow each one of these gentlemen to introduce themselves real briefly, and then we'll just get right into talking about it. So we'll start here. Cool. Can I... Okay. All right. So uh, I'm Alex Schultz. Uh, I work at Facebook. I'm, uh, I actually run the internet marketing team at Facebook, so uh, I'm not specifically um, someone who does sales. Um, I'm the kind of guy who buys uh, our own marketing and runs ads on our site to promote our things. So I have a lot of the tips and tricks for what's worked for us when we've been using our inventory ourselves, buying billions of impressions. Um, you know, the thing I wanted to talk about a tiny bit was the changes between 2009 in January, when I came and, and talked as part of this panel then, um, and now in 2010 January. Um, we've brought, one thing that hasn't changed is that this community is a huge part of our revenue and very important to us. So we've brought a good team with us. Um, we've got three folks in the front just here who can, can you guys stand up? And um, if you have any questions, um, that I don't answer. We're going to be here afterwards, and so you can ask these folks um, those questions. You can ask me questions. Um, we really want to answer any questions you've got. Take time uh, to look after this community and help you succeed. So a lot has changed from last year. Last year, when I was talking on this panel, Facebook had just broken 100 million users. This year, we've just broken 350 million users. Um, last year, we just started doing account management and inside sales. This year, we have a dedicated account management team, affiliates at facebook.com, to support just the affiliate community. Um, last year, we had no bulk tools at all. You couldn't upload ads en masse. There were not even the Firefox hacks that people have now put together. Now we do have a bulk upload tool that if you're spending a large amount of money and your ads are of a high quality, we're happy to give you access to use. Um, and we're even starting to test a, a, an API that hopefully sometime this year will be available to this community to use again mm -hmm. with high quality ads and so on. DK's here. Good to see you, oh, DK. Thank you. You were moments away from getting Twitter bombed. <laughs> but really, there are, there are two big There's points. Updated, updated version. Oh, okay. But really, there are, there are two big points that I wanted to make to you guys. Number one, last year at the meat market, the main stuff that we heard was one was two things. Firstly, can you please stop changing the terms on us? Can you be consistent with us? Can you actually let us do our jobs and let us have a stable platform on which to operate? And we've only made one policy change in the last three months. We've stabilized out. And the thing that I've heard this year, more than anything, has actually been, how do we do more with you? It's been a lot more positive, which is great for us, and we're happy to hear the questions, but I hope that you'll see that last year we talked to you guys and we said we were going to improve the terms that we were using and we were going to put you in a position where we weren't changing things under you, and I feel that we're there this year a lot, lot better. Um, and we will protect the user experience on Facebook. We have pretty harsh terms on what we will and won't allow, because for us the user experience is still core, um, but we've kept those pretty stable as we promised last year. And then the last thing, and I, this is the last thing I'm going to say, but I think it's the most important thing that's changed, is last year people were asking us, why are you here? Why is Facebook at Affiliate Summit? Do you have an affiliate program? Like, what are you doing? This year, the question's changed a lot. It's how can I do better with the Facebook advertising? How can I make more? How can I get access to the bulk upload tool? How can I do this? How can I do that? What is most effective? 
And we have a fabulous panel here today. Like all these guys are incredibly smart um, on Facebook advertising. Uh, and we'll answer those questions for you. But the fact that that's changed as a question is really important for you guys to home in on. Last year, nobody was doing this. There was massive opportunity because nobody was trying. We didn't have this infrastructure that we have in place now. We didn't have this account management team. We weren't getting these bulk upload tools. The really professional stuff was totally zero. There is still huge opportunity. But I'd say if last year we were where paid search was in 2002, this year we're where paid search was in 2003, 2004. And if you want to capitalize on the opportunity, I think this is going to be the last year of really big opportunity because of inefficiencies in the marketplace. We're moving fast. We're making this product better. We're taking the feedback. You guys have an opportunity, but now is the time to get in on the upswing rather than a year down the line, two years down the line, when there will be a lot of big professional companies doing this. Um, so I'm really happy to answer questions. I'm really looking forward to answer questions. I want lots of questions. Um, and we have a fantastic panel. These guys are just brilliant. Go ahead. <clears throat> Thanks, Alex. Um, Mark Colosiopo from Globalizer. Um, I've been in this business since 96, doing internet marketing. I've done all facets. Um, in the late 90s, did a lot of email. Um, did uh, a lot of search in the early 2000s. I did, I've run Pops. I've been an affiliate marketer. I've had run a couple of different networks. Um, got into Facebook advertising about a year and a half ago, I guess. And uh, I have to say, out of all the things I've been involved in, um, this is the most exciting opportunity that I've, I've seen you know, in the last 13, 14 years or so that I've been doing this. And uh, I'm glad to be on this panel and you know, hope I could answer some questions and you know, maybe provide some insight. My name is Jeremy Shoemaker. Um, I have a blog at Shoe Money, which is kind of a big deal. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, so Shoe Money Media, we um, originally started as kind of a service-oriented company and stumbled our way into affiliate marketing. And you know, we we discovered a massive, massive market displacement in Google AdWords in you know 2002, 2003. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have the capital to really capitalize on it. And then later, you know, when Yahoo launched a platform again, there was a huge um, market dislocation where we were able to capitalize. And the same thing with Microsoft Ad Center and now with Facebook launching. Um, it, the thing is, it's, it's not perfect, right? And I think everyone, including Alex, would agree with that. Yep. And, but they're making it, they're, they're moving it towards that perfection. And, but the reason why there's such an, an amazingly huge opportunity in it is because it's not perfect. It's not where you know, these giant companies can just dump you know, a huge budget like they do with AdWords or any of the other platforms now, and you can't compete on them. So you can compete on Facebook if you're willing to have patience and an open line of communication with the people that were just introduced by Alex. They do an amazing job communicating better than, I mean, out of all the companies I've named, I've, I've never had you know, as, as an open line of direct communication on exactly what I'm doing um, and have such honesty come back and feedback and stuff and people that work as hard as the Facebook team. So, I mean, if you're willing to put in, you know, a little elbow grease and really do some testing and learning, I mean, this opportunity right now with Facebook is enormous. And I echo what Mark says. I mean, we've never seen it. And, and we're in a great position to capitalize on it now. But I think that, you know, no matter where you're at, you're probably in a position to capitalize on it too. Introduce. Hello. So, so far, this is looking a lot more sedate than I expected this panel to be. <laughs> um, I'm DK. I'm lesser of a big deal. And uh, I've been doing a lot of Facebook advertising last year since Jeremy pointed me into it. I've done, every, I've done internet marketing for the last decade, uh, everything from SEO to reputation management. I've been doing Facebook advertising recently. Uh, and I'm going to do an eight-minute presentation, so I'll stop talking. <laughs> Uh, my name is Marcus. I started Plenty of Fish a couple of years ago and you know, did affiliate marketing for pretty much the first month and pretty much gone through every new platform that's come along since then, like AdWords, you know, now Facebook advertising and Yahoo. And Facebook is just the latest iteration of what we've always been doing. You know? We're acting as middlemen. There's companies. We take their offers and we make money off it. And each, each generation or each iteration allows you to make more and more money than the previous generation. You just have to have the right tactics. All right, so let's take a quick poll. Who in here has used Facebook to run ads? <clears throat> All right. 
So there's a pretty advanced audience. Now, who in here would consider themselves a new, new person? I hate saying the newbie word. Okay. So we're primarily full of people. So here's what we're looking for from today, guys. We're really looking for tips and strategies. I'm not a big theory guy. I don't know if anyone in this room wants to hear about the theories of the publish, uh, publishing business and all this stuff. I think that you want to walk out of here with specific tactics to improve conversions, to get your ads approved and things like that. Are we in agreement? All right, so it's on these guys right now, right? Okay, and we're gonna make sure that that happens. One way we're gonna make sure that happens is you're gonna come up and ask specific questions. You're gonna get direct answers from them. So who's gonna come up to the mic, get in line, let's get this going. Um, DK, you do have something prepared. Would you like yeah. to go through that now? Yeah. Okay, good. I'll take that. So what this is, it's just a real simple Facebook campaign I put together over about four days last week, so I'd have something to talk about. Uh, buddy of mine, Robert Drysdale, uh, he's the six-time world champion in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He's the trainer to people like Frank Mir and a lot of the top UFC fighters. Uh, but he's the tall one, I'm the short one. And you guys, by the way, internet marketers make really crappy audiences and it makes me nervous, so if you guys can laugh when I make jokes, it'll be very appreciated. <laughs> Thank you. So he's making a new uh, site called DrysdaleJiuJitsu.com. It's going to train high-end trainers uh, and people want to learn how to do jitsu. You watch it on your computer, you wrestle your uh, neighbor in your underpants at home. So the goal of it is to acquire leads of people who are interested in online Brazilian jiu-jitsu training. The original goal was to get it at less than $10 a lead. I set my goal at $3 a lead, then that way I had plenty of room to screw up. Question, why do people want to learn how to fight? The reason is so you don't get your ass kicked. Okay, so what we did is based on previous successes, I just threw up some landing pages because initially you want to test ads and demographics, find out what you can get that has a high CTR. So it didn't matter what the landing pages were. And we tested different ads, afraid of bullies, never fear a bully again. Uh, people who live in the United States, 50 years and younger or male, need to protect yourself, afraid to go to school. We did this to kids. I remembered when I was in junior high school and I was terrified. Uh, this guy looked mean. Are you afraid? Do people scare you? Uh, targeted people in the United States 15 to 40 who are male, getting pushed around, stop being afraid. I honestly didn't know what was going to work, but I went down this path of people being scared of getting their butts kicked. Uh, this guy turned out, one of my staff members thought he was really hot. Nobody wanted to click on it, so Facebook just never even uh, showed it after a few impressions. So I had no idea what would happen. It ended up this one guy, afraid to go to school, had a CTR of 0.45%. So he was the winner of round one, best ad at a 0.045 CTR, cost us 29 cents a click. Afraid to school, stomach ache because of the bullies. Obviously that was a typo, but it worked, so we left it on bullies, bad punctuation. <laughs> so landing pages were just written by instinct after me doing 25 years of all kinds of marketing and sales. I basically put myself in the mindset of the user. I never know what's going to work, so as Shumani said, you test a ton. Uh, I've heard lots of people say, I tried Facebook ads and they don't work. I ask them, how many ads and landing pages did you try? Often they tried, you know, a few dozen. Uh, often it takes me dozens or hundreds or more of combinations to actually find something that works. So this is the first landing page. We had no idea if it worked, but it was the first one we threw up. All we're trying to get is a name and an email so we can email them to invite them to the site later. Uh, so then I decided to test colors. Over and over I found, after Shuma, you talked about putting orange buttons on things. If you put a splash of color on somewhere, it seems to really increase the CTR. So we decided to test that. Previously, I always found yellow worked. That was not the case this time. We just tried putting a splotch in the color, and we tried changing the color of his shirt. And they all had the same title, afraid to go to school. Uh, and this is the cost per lead acquisition using this ad with different colors using the same landing page. Uh, turned out, for whatever reason, that the guy with the green shirt uh, was the one that won. We were doing this with 50 clicks on each test, so it's possible the 3 and the $4 ones really weren't statistically different, but it was still cheaper, so I went in that direction. I followed that path. So we took the one with the green shirt that cost $3 uh, per lead generated. Uh, best color variation, $3 a lead. That was run during the day, and then that evening, while I was uh, watching the previews for Avatar, uh, or not the previews, but just before Avatar started, uh, we tried 21 different landing pages to find out which uh, landing page would work best with this ad. Uh, we used a bunch of different options, and we just made small variations. This one we used, you can't see it well here, but that's the famous orange button at the bottom where it says submit, and stop is in red, red all across the top, tried putting in some green. 
Now, what's funny is if you have a Romanian programmer like I do and you say to them, you know, come up with anything you want, they will put buttons that say things like that. You have to read it with an accent to really understand it properly. <laughs> So the winner on this, you'll notice, is actually more expensive than earlier in the day. I think it's because we ran these at night, and maybe people were less motivated to learn how to fight late at night than they are in the day when they have energy. But it ended up $3.20 per lead uh, for the original ad in this landing page. Uh, so then we used uh, the winning ad demographic and landing page combo. We, I did a final test of ad headlines, because you can go through the cycle over and over and over, increase in conversion. There's no ending of it. We started off with afraid to go to school. We went with afraid to go outside, terrified of bullies, feel like a wimp, bully issues, tear waiting at school, terrified to go to school, afraid of bullies, bully fear, plus some other ones. And this is the winner, got a bully problem. In a million years, I never would have guessed that would work, and I didn't really put any thought into writing it. I just spit out a bunch of things in that area, and this is the one that ended up working. Got a bully problem, winner by a knockout is the best title. It ended up costing us $1.43 per lead to generate these. Uh, all in all, this was about maybe four hours of work on my part, a couple hours of work on my programmer's part, and that's it. Thank you. DK, what did you use to do the testing? Say again? What did you use to do the testing? The, to Facebook change? advertising. No. <laughs> <laughs> right, go ahead and ask the question. The question is, you did all of that, those different testing, and you used Facebook to, to have all the, the different ads switched out and everything? Uh, for the, no, the ads, uh, it, it's at a website called healthymessage.com that I just run all kinds of landing pages on. Is that what oh, you mean? Oh, yeah, but how did you rotate all those different ones through there? Uh, we just, uh, he just, it's a, a WordPress blog, and he just kept copying and pasting it and just making you small changes. You did it changes. manually, okay. That's yeah, we what just I'm, did it manually. We're okay. low-tech, old school. But I'm guessing that there's a lot of people in the room who don't do the testing that's required, and that's why I'm trying to get out. What, so can somebody answer that question? What's a better way for somebody to get into this and start to do the testing split? So if, if you have a, a WordPress thing um, like DK does, I mean, there's, a, there's an excellent product product by Google called Website Optimizer, and you can actually just paste in all the different types of code. I mean, you can have as many as you want, and then it will automatically rotate them for you and then show you the best results. Yeah. So if you're, if, even if you're on WordPress or even if it's a static page, you can even test with different button colors, I mean, everything. I mean, that's what I would highly recommend. One, uh, one very important thing to, to bear in mind is, um, you know, we mentioned the bulk upload tool there. Most people don't have access to it. Uh, it's only if you're spending a, a reasonably significant amount of money in the high quality ads, which you can talk to us about that. Um, right now, we don't automatically do rotation of ads for you. We don't do all those kind of testing. So you have to manually input the ads. And that's one of those points where hard work gains opportunity on the Facebook Is system. that coming? Um, definitely. I mean, like, we've got a lot of things on the roadmap that we want to we wanna get out, and that's one of the things that's absolutely on our, on our roadmap. But when we launch that, it becomes easier for people to compete, which is good for us. It's bad for you. So I'd, I'd definitely suggest putting in the work now and being the person who understands how to do it. Because, like, in Facebook ads, you've got the title, you've got the image, and you've got the text, and they all have a big impact on your click-through rate. So you've got a lot more degrees of freedom than which with Google Which one is AdWords. the biggest? Very much dependent on your campaign. I think brilliant what DK showed with the color of shirts. Like having the image actually grab your eye is very important. So image is probably the most important. But that headline, when, when we first launched this, I was sure that it was all going to be dominated by image based on previous experience. Actually, it turns out that headline is really important. Absolutely. All right, let's take a question. So um, how much revenue did the guy actually generate from that campaign? And how would he compare that ad campaign to his other traditional ad campaigns? It's all you, DK. How much revenue did you generate? How much money did that ad so make? Yeah. That, 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 that particular for the campaign, lead, the, site, the site is not live yet. It'll be live within a couple weeks, we're hoping. Uh, and I know that they're working on it. So I did this as a test because I wanted to have something that I could promote publicly. Uh, so I can't tell you what the actual revenue will be on that in the end until the site goes live. I mean, I can tell you from a live thing that I've done with a dentist, you know, just acquiring leads. Um, we were doing something like $65 a lead, and we filled their four offices up in about three months and spent less than $400, I think, on our Facebook campaign. I mean, so the ROI is enormous. Um, yeah, especially on local. Yeah, local is huge. We did various testing, too, but, I mean, honestly, we filled up the practices. So I live in Lincoln, Nebraska, so it's not exactly a hub of people. But 
But I mean, like in you know bigger cities and stuff like that. I mean, I could definitely see where this could be a full time job for somebody. Go ahead. Um, okay, a couple things. Uh, what is what is the amount? The dollar. I mean, is there like a dollar amount that you guys are talking about to get to use this bulk tool? Mm -hmm. um, what I mean, what are you guys expecting? Um, monetary wise I mean, how can we get access to this bulk too what do we need to be spending yep. first yeah. of all and second of all I got you guys this nice little thumb drive yesterday with some do's and don'ts <laughs> um, most of those ads were, were don'ts what did you think about those ads I thought I thought they were great I thought they were very clever but reading through that PDF last night um, those ads were don'ts Tough question. Great, both on me. I'm liking this, though. This is good. I like tough questions. And please, more people get up to the mic, because we, we need your questions from this panel to be a, a big success. So um, on the first one, what we look for to get you to personal account management is something in the range of about $30,000 a month of spend and high-quality ads. Like, it's very important that your ads are of, of, a, of a high quality and are not like um, potentially ones that may not be approved. Um, you know, and if, you, if you're in that spend range, we have a bunch of people at the front that you can talk to and potentially get yourself set up with what you need. Once you have personal account management and you're pumping quality ads into the system, that's when we're interested in, in giving, you the, uh, giving you the bulk upload tools. On the second point, it, it, it's actually a really good question and kind of embarrassing. Um, but I think the, the really important thing uh, to bear in mind is a lot of those guidelines um, there are the rules and there are the guidelines. So I'm not quite sure which specific areas you, you mean um, were violated. But if you look at them like stuff like the color, altering the color of the images and things like that, that's about p turning people's teeth green to get people to click on it and stuff like that that we've actually put it in place for. So in many cases, some of those guidelines are um, a little bit uh, uh, difficult to interpret. Um, and we, we realize that. And hopefully, if you find that ads are being approved or disapproved, that you want to understand exactly where you draw the line, affiliates at facebook.com is the team that now is dedicated to supporting this community. And they can give you specific answers on your questions and help you get over the hurdle of getting the right thing live. So I mean, in all honesty, some of those ads probably shouldn't have gone live. But actually, most of them were, were OK. OK. So that, that leads me to my next question. Um, we've, got a, we've got the largest online social network in connecting students to colleges and universities. Um, we do about... I thought that was us. Kudos. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> Good man. Um, we drive, we drive you know, a quarter, quarter of a million profile registrations targeted directly to colleges and universities a month. And we don't come anywhere close to spending thirty thousand um, dollars in the in the ad space so if you've got that affiliate team are they going to be preparing a, t a tool um, for the majority of your affiliates here so absolutely we're definitely looking to make the tools have have um, have broader application and that's hopefully going to happen over the next year like last year what I said in this summit was we'd have some tools in place some API's some bulk upload tools for the big spenders those are there now I'm hoping by sort of this time next year when I, I sit here again, we'll be in a situation where it's not being restrained and we're able to handle it. But at the moment, um, genuinely because of you know, ad review and because of the situations where you know, people get around us. I remember I was at uh, eBay UK and I can't decide if this is inappropriate. Whatever, it's a good story. I was, uh, I was at eBay UK and someone um, in 2004 used the eBay API to upload porn to the Motors site that overwhelmed the review of listings so that every listing on eBay Motors was porn in the UK. <laughs> um, and we're at the stage where we're still pretty young and people could get round uh, our tools if we use, if we open them up too broadly too soon. And so we're not quite ready to have them open up broadly, but we definitely would like to uh, by this time next year would be our goal. So hopefully, but I'm not guaranteeing it. Okay. Can I just see some Thank of the, you. the guides? Part. You know, I think I think like the guidelines are just. I mean, they're they're guides. They're just a, b a basic guide. And the one thing that we found, I think, in all the different areas that we've tried, and we've tried many different things on Facebook, is that a lot of times, sometimes what you think won't go through will, and what you think will for sure, and you can justify it in every which way in your head, and it makes sense to you, will get disapproved every time. 
And the key to that is kind of like just talking to these guys right here and just saying like, okay, I don't really, because there's a lot of things you can't just define as black and white, you know? I mean, there's just, there's all these areas of gray and, and sometimes it's just a matter of they want to wait and see what, in my opinion, um, what other people, if they dislike the ad or stuff like that, I mean, user feedback, I'm sure plays a big part in it as well. Marcus, give us an example of the advertising that you've done through Facebook and how it's worked for you. So what we do is I, I run a whole bunch of banners on, on Facebook and have been doing for years. And for us, the best thing that works is putting the domain name in the ad. For every one person that clicks through on an ad, there's four people that come through search or some other means. So all the, you know, most of when you talk about optimizing Facebook, you're always talking about click-through rates and impressions and all that stuff. It doesn't matter. None of that matters. The only thing that matters is how many people actually end up your site. It doesn't matter in what medium they come through. So what we do is we focus heavily on branding the site and trying to get people to come through other means, spread it virally. And that has worked extremely well for us. Okay. And I think that works well for you because you've built such an amazing brand over the course of years, which is like, what are you guys like the third largest dating site now or bigger? Bigger. So, <laughs> but I think for the majority of people out there, like who are trying to play, I mean, you guys don't allow trademarks and domains in, or do you? So um, we certainly allow you to use your brand names, like Plenty of Fish, totally, totally. But like, cool. let's say I'm promoting somebody else's thing. We'll just say whatever. whatever well, then, then if you want to do that, then you set up your, you buy yourself a throwaway domain, something that's brandable. And exactly. you throw that in the ad. Because exactly. affiliate marketing, up until now, it assumes that branding has absolutely no value. When we run an ad, you know, we run it for a few months, we get tens of thousands of leads, and we stop running that ad, we see a permanent lift. If right. you do not just have from brand recognition. Just right. from brand recognition increasing. Right. I'm just saying for most people out here that aren't going for brand recognition because they're just affiliate marketers or you know, trying to push a product or like my local dentist guy. You know, I mean, I... I mean, I'm guessing, I mean, we only run for like three weeks at a time and then we're booked, you know? So our goal is totally about CTR, keeping the budget down, everything like that, because we don't have like, like cash like you got, probably like 100 grand just to throw out a test and see what works or what doesn't work. See, but the, but the problem is, is that in two, three years from now, everyone else won't be able to play. I totally Because if, if we make four, if we throw in our brand into the ad and we suddenly make four times as much money as we would otherwise, I mean... How are regular affiliates going to compete? I agree. And, but that's the problem. Also, this leads into the whole tool thing, which isn't really you. But, but the more that Alex talks about tools being implemented and make things easier and all that stuff, that's going to suck for me, right? Because then, I mean, we have people full-time working 12-hour shifts that are doing day parting. Well, they've been scaring the crap out of me, telling me that day parting is going to be in the system for a long time. It's going to be like next week it's going to be implemented, right? It won't be next week. Well, I hope not. Because I'm going to tell you that as soon as it is, everyone's going to turn on their ads at this time and everyone's going to have them scheduled off. So, you know, I mean, there's there's huge opportunities right now that aren't going to be there. And, and like Mario said, things are going to drastically change over time. You know? So, I mean, there's, there's a couple of really good points in this one and, and we should uh, also get to these guys. But like, number one, I do think the branding point is really, really interesting. If you can, if you can create, like, I always call out Scott Jangro because I just, I think he's a great guy and also his, uh, his Costume Z is, is a very good example. Costume Z has like an awesome brand. And so putting Costume Z into an ad, like putting Plenty of Fish into an ad, can be very successful. And these guys made their money from affiliates. And you guys can make money by building a brand and getting permanent recognition and getting traffic. That being said, I think Shu's got a great point too in, in that most of us are doing arbitrage and so it's a, it's a slightly different situation. But the, the really interesting thing from Marcus's is like when he turns off his Facebook ads, he sees a massive step down that isn't from direct clicks. And we see the same in like our email marketing campaigns. I run. I mean, Facebook sends a lot of email. And we run huge email marketing campaigns to bring users back to the site who've um, you know, not used the site in a certain number of days. When those campaigns run, I see significantly more people resurrect, come back to Facebook, than actually even open the emails. So there is a big effect there. If you can leverage it cleverly, you can turn your affiliate business into a plenty of fish, into a costume scene. How? 
by appropriately measuring your uplift beyond just the direct clicks. Okay. Like actually looking at the traffic and knock on. And it's hard. This is really hard. This is why there aren't many Marcuses around and there aren't many people with the brand of Schumann. Yeah, but around. everyone wants to be these guys. So yeah. we got to give them the exact, the exact way we're going to do it. I mean, that's it. You measure the traffic to your site. You have a brandable website. You get that traffic uplift so the and you easiest, leverage it. The easiest way, I would think, is, is probably Google Analytics. I mean, just, yeah. I don't know, Mark, I mean, is there a certain tool that you guys use across the board? I mean, it's not perfect, but it gives you a good idea. Yeah, get on the mic. Yeah, one thing I wanted to say too, I just noticed Tim Ash is sitting here. The whole thing that I did with, uh, you can stand up and wave. The whole thing I did with flipping over through all the different landing pages and all the different ideas. Uh, Tim Ash wrote a book. He, he barely even knows who I am, but it's, he wrote a book called Landing Page Optimization. It's a little difficult to get through because of the math in it. But if you can even just get a third of what's in that book, it absolutely completely changed everything I did. Because all of a sudden I realized you can spend a dollar for ads and just see whatever happens, or you can just go through over and over. He, he is the expert on landing page optimization like nobody I've ever seen in my life, an unpaid solicitation. Agreed. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, sir, Time let's take your question. You've been waiting yes. patiently. Thanks. Great panel. Thanks can you get closer to the mic, please? Can you hear me now? Yes. Cool. Get this All right. So great panel. Thanks for being here. Two questions, one subtle, one not so much. One is uh, the agency feature, do you plan on rolling something like that out for agencies like us that want to manage 20, 30 plus clients? Yep. Um, so that would be my first question. Second one, I'll just wait till you answer that. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to so, be subtle. <laughs> yeah. This is a really... That, that's a really, Yeah, we get asked that a lot. Um, agency, there's definitely um, at least going to be um, some... Uh, more support for people with multiple accounts rolling out um, over the over the next roadmap cycle. Uh, it is a very big pain point for us internally um, to work with agencies because they want to spend more money with us, and your credit limit cannot be spread easily across accounts. You know, we can't have a master account that, that allows you to have people log into multiple accounts. Je Jeremy actually got his personal account switched off, which killed his people's access to his advertising account because someone uploaded a picture they shouldn't have. Like. It's, um, it's a big problem, what you're calling out, and I'm happy to put my hands up. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> hey, Zoogle runs some really good parties. Um, I'm happy to uh, put my hands up and say that we've not fixed it. I, I definitely, um, I can't tell you when things are going to roll out. We've definitely got, it on, got some of that on the roadmap this quarter, and we definitely feel the pain internally because we have a lot of agency clients who can't manage their accounts properly. So we feel it very directly, and um, it's something we want to work on. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, would it be like a quarter or two out? Do you have like a general sense? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't really give you exact numbers. I would, I would say that it will start getting easier for agencies in Q2 and then hopefully easier and easier over time. But there's no, there's no guarantees for when we're going to roll the stuff out. We're, we're definitely, definitely feeling the pain internally though because we have to do a lot of the management um, of like credit limits and so on. Like these guys in the front row have to do it um, themselves and it's, it's very hard for us as it is for you guys. So um, apologies and uh, this time next year, I hope you won't have to ask that same question. Great, well it's being worked on so we- No soup for that. you, okay. Next one, question. Oh, you so have another question? One, yeah, next okay, one's the meat and potatoes. Let's get to so, the non-subtle question. <laughs> uh, next one is really the guidelines. Like, um, can you elaborate more on which categories our best practices and actually probably easier to go with the not so best practices so we know and it's easier I mean obviously there's tactics but there's a gray line going here right <laughs> yeah and I think everyone's looking for him to come out and say you do this or you do this and I don't think we're gonna get that answer today so I'm gonna save his response because he's not gonna give it to you Right. But you're better to get a reply from these guys about where they found the line because they've danced up and down and they know where it is. My best advice, do not dance on the line. If you don't, I've talked to like three or four people, some of you are in the room, who have had their account permanently shut down because they've crossed the line too many times. So I would argue like if you're getting a lot of stuff disapproved, take a step back because otherwise you might get your account block, blocked permanently. And if we then catch you with another account, we'll block that one too. There's a question. How many yeah. strikes is there? Three. Okay. Yeah, I See, mean, that's good. I would say, you know, run safe ads. I mean, don't go too far towards the line. Build a relationship, you know, kind of get some currency with these guys, a trusted account. You know, if you have questions, you could talk to the account team. We've run tons of ads that 
you know, we weren't sure about and we've asked the team and, you know, some have, you know, made it through and others, they said, you know, maybe don't try that. And, you know, some have gone through and we've gotten some, you know, negative feedback and so we've had them shut down and other things that we didn't think, you know, necessarily would ne get approved did and worked well and didn't have any problems. So, you know, I think you just have to take that route. Yeah. The most dangerous category is dating. dating. Like the most dangerous category for you to be playing on the line is dating. Thank uh, you very much. And what about health offers and just things that are really hot? If you've got specific <laughs> questions, we've actually got um, yeah, let's the person get them who manages the, the compliance team here, so you can ask us at the front at the end. And, I think, and that I think goes the in general. Sorry. I think the one thing I find with, uh, in the mobile space, because I've been in the mobile space for a long time, is that the rules are it's always evolving, it's always changing, there's always new offers, there's always new rules, regulations, blah, blah, blah. And so the one thing is just, I think you're going to hear a lot of is being communication because even the documents that are probably on this thing have changed. I mean, since you just looked at them. So, I mean, the biggest thing is if you're trying something, what you don't want to do is it keeps a lot of people think you need to hammer the crap out of it until you get an ad approved, and that's the way you do it. That's the way you get banned. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so then you're the guy with you know constantly trying to make a new Facebook account. So you've um, got to be in it to win it. Like yeah. you can't have your account blocked. You're, I mean, you're trying to be a long-term partner, right, in the long-term of things. I mean, you're not wanting to be a fly-by-night guy because, you know, you want to build a relationship with these people. So, so I mean, you know, just, just try, test things. I mean, I've, we've had people that work for us who have uploaded ads before, and when they got declined, I was like, I can't believe they used that for the title. You know, that was a pretty aggressive, but we don't try it again, you know. I mean, it's just one of those things. I'm like, oops. You know, but, but it's one in 5,000 ads that we've uploaded, you know, in the last couple of weeks, so. I mean, you know, sometimes there's a gray area, and like I said, sometimes you're surprised what's approved, sometimes you're surprised what makes it through. But it's just, you know, you just have to, to test a lot. So yeah, I think my question was more for verticals and categories, but I think that answers semi what I was looking for, so thanks. Are you seeing, like, as the mobile space as a whole, like, what's the guidelines? Or well, I mean, um, you know, like, for example, some of the bigger networks don't allow you to run some offers, uh, like a category like the gentleman mentioned, dating, some other bigger networks don't allow you to run health offers. So if there's like a broader, easier way to, you know, define like those categories, that would be helpful. There's well, no easy answer. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I can speak, we, we do dating, we do a lot of dating. And um, especially in the last, you know, several, well, about the last six months or so. And it's an adventure because, I mean, it's, it is, it's a constant challenge and a constant monitoring and ads are approved and disapproved. and sometimes within minutes of being approved, you know, and it's just, it's a constant thing. And we're trying to move out of that area into other areas because it's, it is so time consuming for our staff uh, who manages that area. But I mean, it's, it's a very profitable area if you can get it dialed in, um, but. Yeah, we have to move on. Thank you very much Thanks for your so questions. Much. Could I say something real quick on that too? In, in my own work that I've gotten to do with the Facebook guys over the last year, one of the things that shows truly from inside is they actually care more about the user experience than they do about income. And the real simple criteria is if you look at it, if it's going to suck for the user, if they click through and actually buy the product, eventually it's going to get disapproved. And if you create a great experience for the user, give them something of value, they're actually going to end up getting improved and they'll help you. Yeah, I mean, just just very quick closing on the date. I'll give you a very specific thing with dating. Put, if you're promoting, you know, if plenty of fish, I, we don't, I don't think you guys do it, but if they do, then put plenty of fish in the ad. Like, hey, are you looking for singles? Check out plenty of fish. If you're looking for people on Mate 1, check out Mate 1. What you don't want is people to go to the dating site and be fooled into thinking, like, because you just put a hot chick up there and they clicked on it, right? So you got a great click-through ratio. That's a bad user experience. So that's what you don't want. Yep. Well, there's a certain amount of trust between Facebook and the people on Facebook. If they click on an ad and it doesn't go someplace where they want to go, it's the same rules for AdWords or anything else. I mean, there's a reason you have a quality score. There's a reason you have all of these things, right? So, all right, let's take your question. All right, hey, guys. Um, so the, I'm guessing the, the $30,000 um, barrier of entry is a little high for some of the people in here. Um, I understand some people have been banned for you know a lot of the, the third party plugins like you know to get some mass uploads and whatnot. Is it the actual plugin itself? Is it the use of it that's causing that? Or is, is the banning being caused because they keep trying to submit stuff that's getting disapproved? Like does Facebook have a problem with just being more efficient yeah. or what's the issue? So in, in particular it's the last one because so officially we are not happy with the plugins. Right? 
they're not supported and like when we made the big change to our interface last month most of the plugins broke and that 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 hurt those advertisers using it so that wasn't good um, you know to some extent unofficially you could have have a team of people uploading the ads and we couldn't tell nest well we could tell but like we couldn't really tell the difference between a plugin and just a team of people uploading the ads. Mm -hmm. So the real thing that's causing the folks who get banned problems is they're going mad early. I mean, test your way in. So it, it's like these guys are saying, get yourself big, you know, and you'll have a personal account manager, you can have the conversations with us, but don't try and upload 5,000 ads, get all 5,000 disapproved because mm -hmm. they're violating our terms and then expect us not to block you. So um, gen generally, the reason they're getting disapproved is the quality of the ads. It's not using the tools. And um, just one more thing. So, so I mean, if we're submitting good quality ads, chances are we should be able to use a tool like that. I know you don't want to go on the spot saying that. Um, but the other, the other issue is there's been instances where we've submitted two exact ads, but we've had a slight variation, just like the, uh, mm -hmm. the ad that DK showed. And one will get approved, one will not. Yep. So is that um, Different reviewers, what's going on? Is it it's different reviewers? Yeah. It's different reviewers. And, and again, like I, uh, things are a lot better now than they were a year ago. Um, but to some extent, there's a human element in it. And if something, again, as I say, if you're on that borderline between what's okay and what's not according to our terms, two people can look at the same ad and one can say that's just inside and one can say that's just outside and you will get that noise. There are a lot of advertisers that get everything through. There are a lot of advertisers that get nothing through and eventually get blocked. Um, there's a lot of value to being to walking that line but I would say start a little bit away from it. Build your spend, build your credibility with us and walk towards it and then you'll have an easier way to have a discussion with us about it. Shoot for the line immediately and get it sort of 50-50 approved, disapproved, that's when you're going to run into problems with your account being blocked and, and shut down. So, um, you know, I don't want to spend too much time on this stuff because I think there's real tactics that people can get and there's a lot of questions on this area. Yeah, I do want to get to a lot more tactics here. I mean, I think it's what a lot of people are looking for. If, if you do want to ask questions specifically about what's happening with the guidelines and everything, there are four people from Facebook here in the front you can get after the show. Yeah. But, you know, I, you know, everybody wants to know this kind of stuff, but you just no, don't have the answers. You've the got time. a really valuable panel yeah. here. Like, these guys know more about internet marketing than, than most people that I've ever worked with. So thank you. Definitely you Thanks a lot, guys. Next. My questions are uh, more tactical. And um, what I want to know is, are you guys going to, you have really good demographic tools like age, uh, sex, location. Are you planning on adding anything where we can target users based on installed applications, third party applications? Second question, if you develop an application, what information is uh, passed to the developer. And last question, when are you going to put a dislike button on the site? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to make a, mo a moderator uh, discussion. Uh, that's a I want to get to tactics here. I mean, really, if you have specific questions about what Facebook's going to do or guidelines or something, please get to these people after the show. And I'm sorry to do that, but the title of this panel is Killer Tactics. And we do have people up here who actually tell you how to make money with this stuff. So if you have specific questions about that, let's let's do that so please and we have the team here so you can ask us those questions please do please do in person <clears throat> this is a tactics question uh, I do paid search on, on on Yahoo and MSN and I regularly regularly pull up you know nice looking landing pages and, and I say gee I need to scale the I need to scale could, would you up. mind could you start over and speak a little yeah, louder yeah, we have yeah, terrible yeah. acoustics up it's, there. it seems a natural way to go to, to, to take stuff that's working in paid search in the legion in the legion networks and move those up to Facebook the question is um, can you use you know the plethora of, of creatives that the that the um, uh, that the uh, lead gen networks make available to you, and and just plug those plug those in for creatives. No. In other words, there's two issues. One of one of them is creatives, creatives, and the other one is landing pages. It's especially in paid search. There's two things. You know, you have nice, nicely targeted traffic and a, and a very nice, very nice landing page. For for something like Facebook, you have to have a creative, something that people will click through, and then something that they land on. What the, what the paid search does is tell you, tell you which landing pages work nicely. Uh, they also, um, so the question is, will the creatives that you use that are available through the, through the lead gen networks work appropriately for? No. So, so what you're asking is like, 
like if you go with the Zoogle ads or whoever, or like with Mark's network globalizer, if they give you banner ads or creatives, HTML creative, stuff like that. Yeah, that's there's not... thirty of them. There's thirty of them and 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 what Facebook wants is you 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 keep cycling through so you don't have the same creative uh, creative there every day. But right, but I've never seen any network that creates a Facebook creative. You like a one ten by eighty? I'm I'm t yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the, the they're, seven they're out there. Sure. I mean they're not out there commonly, but we certainly have some. I've seen more and more networks start putting them out there. Um, uh, there are a number that have 110 by 80, which is the ad unit on the flyers. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, you, and more and more, I think, down the road, we'll have that. So yeah. if, you don't, if you don't use the Legia Network Creative, do you recommend places to go to get them in bulk so that you, know, you, can, you can cycle them through? I would recommend it's a great place to start. I mean, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Like, even the ones you provide are a good place to start, but you'd want to do some testing like with DK. Thanks for your question. We need to get the next one. Thank you. Uh, this question's for Jeremy. Uh, you've talked about having teams of people that are uploading your ads. Um, how do you recommend going about scaling? I mean, do you go to like community college and try to find smart kids or, and then, you know, and how do you avoid those people not learning all your secrets and then running off and stealing your campaigns? Got you. Well, not, I mean, not many kids at a community college um, can bankroll like spending 30 to $50,000 a day. You know, I mean, just bottom line. So they can see everything you're doing. And I mean, maybe they could do it for 10 minutes, you know, with, with, what they, with the amount of cash flow they have available. But um, I mean, like finding good people is pretty much impossible. I mean, like we've had them come to us from across the country and be like, hey, I'm really good. And here's what I've done so far. If you want me to manage your stuff, I'll take X percentage. We just don't have the bankroll. You know, so a lot of times we bring them in and then we have a very technical staff and we also have a really, really good relationships. Like in the dating space, we have direct relationships with every major dating company as opposed to networks. Um, so we get great, much better payouts than they could have gotten on their own, you know, anywhere. So it's kind of a fortunate situation for us in the, in the actual affiliate space um, that we're able to find these people and, and actually we, we're very fortunate that they come to us. I mean, if we had to actually hire people and train them to do Facebook pay-per-click, there's two sides to it. I mean, like one in the day parting perspective, it's pretty easy to hire anyone to turn off an ad at X o'clock at X and then turn it back on here. But as far as, as, as part of doing like switching to CPM and then raising your bid slowly over the day, I mean, it takes a very patient person. And I mean, we have four and they work into our shift so that they can turn it off, turn it on, raise it, test new things, raise the bids and stuff like that. Those people are hard to find. I mean, I think probably anyone could be trained to do it. I don't want to train anyone to do it. So when they come to us with a lot of experience and then we can take them to the next level, that's what works best for us. I hope that answers your question. All right, let's roll through these questions here. As far as uh, where you're sending people after they click on the ads, can you give us any um, global trends as far as what works best, whether it's squeeze pages or long form letters or fake blogs. And also um, for the uh, jujitsu study that you did, that landing page that you had them going to, is that like a template that you use for a lot of campaigns? And if so, is that because it's useful or is that just... You yeah, that was, that was uh, it's one that we developed that had worked on other campaigns. And I, I know just in general it works and they can fill out a form on it. But, but honestly, I don't, like I said, t read Tim's book on that, but mm -hmm. I just try tons of stuff. I don't even care. If it looks cool to me, I'll try it. If someone, one of my staff goes, hey, let's try this, we'll try it, and just keep trying and trying and trying. Jeremy, I think, has an amazing instinct at going after that quickly. Uh, I've got a good instinct at it, but we just test a ton until we find what works. I mean, what, one thing that I'd say in terms of general trend on the landing pages is anything that tempts you for more information like, you have to be clear on the landing pages, right? We don't, we've obviously got items around that. But anything that's like tempting you. So we tested a bunch of different emails to try and get people to come back to Facebook, for example. And the one that did best was, hey, these are the notifications you've got you know, waiting for you. And stuff like that. Like, anything that, that, that tempts you, I've done this in so many different roles. Anything that's like, here's a little bit more information if you just do this, those are the ones that do best. And think of Facebook as lead generation. Right? We're not bottom of the funnel, we're top of the funnel. And if you think about it that way, it's like how do I get you to be interested enough to become a lead? And it's always there's a little bit more for you if you fill this form out. Look, the, the ads that are showing up first, they're probably doing something right. And chances are if they're doing something really right, they're going to be copied 
10, 20, 100 times in the next week or so. <laughs> so yeah. it's pretty easy to tell what works. That makes sense. Um, also, Jeremy, when you did the uh, lead generation for the dentist, what kind of a site did you like? What kind of page did that look like? Was it a phone? That's a great question, it? and uh, covers it covers this nicely. So, with the with the dentist and with other people with photographers or LASIK eye surgeons or many of the other people we've worked with, we actually use their website. Where we create a specific landing page for this to accomplish our goal. Like we don't we take away all of their navigation. We don't want them surfing around the site. We want to acquire their information right now. We want to acquire their phone number, name, and whatever. If it's after hours, then we just have the phone number, right? Because somebody's not there monitoring you. Because that lead needs to be modified. Or I'm sorry, if it's after hours, we take away the phone number and just put the name in because nobody's going to answer the phone. So, I mean, it's little things like that you need to think about that make all the difference and in the landing page stuff for the local lead gen. But like Alex said, you got to get to the point right away. Like, don't, don't send them to the main page of your site where if it's a brochure type site, sending the page you want to acquire their lead, it's done. That's your goal to acquire the lead, take all the other navigation crap off, and just big name, email, click here to get X, boom, done. Yeah, with uh, very few or another, no other options to click off the page. Yeah. Hey, there, there was one thing, if you don't mind, I just wanted to throw out to you guys to, to look at, um, because running out of time is a real killer tip. We've added this um, new form of targeting a few months ago called um, Friends of Connection or um, you know, connection targeting, which allows you to, uh, if you own a page, you own a um, Facebook application, or you have a site with connect enabled, you can promote to only people who are connected to that site or using that application or on that page, or only people who aren't on the site using that application or page, or people who aren't using it who are friends of people using it. And what we've seen is when you have, you know those ads that have the little social element at the bottom that says five of your friends are fans of this page? People have seen that? Yeah. So those of you who haven't seen that, like come and talk to me, I'll, I'll show you it. But when you have that little element, five of your friends have found this page or used this app or wh whatever it is, you get much higher click-through rates. So if you cleverly can use, like put a connect button on your site, someone connects to your site as their lead generation, and then you use that in the ad, so three of your friends dot, 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 that will get you a much better performance. And then the second sort of interesting thing off the back of that is as of, I think, next week, um, but very soon, we've announced it on our, our blog, you're going to be able to collect emails when people use Facebook Connect on your site if they give you permission. So you should definitely look at that combined with advertising for some really killer performance. That's new. That's coming out in the next few weeks. And I think that combination could be insane for someone very clever. Uh, the, the All biggest, right. The next question. Okay. You got okay. something there, Marcus. Uh, the biggest thing you can do is, for instance, we were promoting some dating offers and through networks that were paying $20. We went through them direct and they pay us 60 I'm mean, usually going direct to a network is the biggest way of improving or going direct to a uh, a company is the biggest way of improving your revenue. But you got to bring the heat. <laughs> Thank you for the question. We, uh, we've got to get to the last two here. I'm sorry. Yeah. For those of you who spend a lot of money with Facebook ads, can you maybe touch on um, what works better for you, whether you're buying through CPC or CPM? And can you also maybe touch on headlines that work well for you, whether they're question-based headlines or statement-based headlines? I'll, <clears throat> I'll take the CPC, CPM question. It really varies by campaign. Um, we do both. I would say 80% of our campaigns, we start off on CPM. I know uh, a lot of people start with CPC. It's more conservative, it's safe, um, but we find we can you know, get results very quickly um, and usually pay less per click paying on a CPM. Um, I would say that's the rule for campaigns where we're spending, we want it, well, our target is under, say, 30 or 40 cents a click. For campaigns where we, the CPC values are pretty high, say 75 cents, dollar plus, we'll typically start CPC and then kind of go from there. Um, but yeah, for the one, generally we start CPM and you know, have better ROI through that. David? Um, so I have a question. Can you get closer to the mic and speak louder? All right, so bid management, um, in terms of click-through rates, uh, if you, let's say you start at um, cost per click, what click rate are you usually shooting for before you switch to CPM bidding? Um, and in terms of uh, click through rates, um, for, for, I mean, Jeremy, have you seen a difference significantly for when you're doing local as opposed to global for click through rates? Is there a different number that you're shooting for? So, in the, in the local space, the more you can target, so we did, we recently just did one, we're filming a thing called Shoe Money System, we're really seeing it anyway. 
And um, in, in one of the things we did, an actual case study with a local bar who was trying to get fans to their fan page, right? And so what we did was is we actually tried all different kinds of pictures with people, you know, mingling around the thing and then pictures of just single girls having fun at the bar or, you know, all different kinds of pictures, get the idea. And then the actual, the best way to get the click-through rates was actually just, it was just two people that were kind of smiling and actually it just said, like, come hang out at the bar name. And that was it. And it was, I don't want to say, like, it was the best click-through ratio, but it was the best amount of fan page people, because that was the goal, right? It was to get people to the fan. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily the best click-through ratio, but it was the best conversion. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, and, and honestly, like, the price difference wasn't that much. I think it was, like, 0.6 or point, 0 0.06, sorry, which, was, which is actually not bad. It's not horrible. I mean, like, you know... It depends on what you're doing. In a local space, obviously, you can pay a lot more money because, I mean, you can just charge a lot more, too. Yeah. I mean, a lot more. So, um, so we, we, also, we run a, a self-serve advertising platform like Facebook does, and what we see across the board is the higher your click-through rate, the lower your conversion rate. Really? Because it, you get more, as you get a higher click-through rate, it's more accidental clicks, more curiosity clicks, and those people are never going to convert. Okay. The other question I had about bid management was, um, a lot of times on Facebook, you'll start an ad, your click-through rate will go up. Let's say I bid 50 cents, uh, and then I get a good click-through rate, and it tells me, oh, you should be bidding 37 cents, and I switch to 37 cents, and like all the impressions stop. So, I mean, is, are you generally starting off low and slowly working your way up, or have you found that different, I mean? Quick answer. I totally less than five minutes. minutes. Yeah, Could you ask hard. it louder? You, okay, again. We've got less than five minutes, so. Okay, real quick. Starting, start, let's say you start your bid at 50 cents, all right? You get a decent click-through rate, tells you that you should lower your bid to like 37 cents. You lower your bid to 37 cents, and for some reason your impressions stop because, I don't know, it seems like it's inaccurate sometimes. So you're doing a CPC campaign? Yeah, let's say you're doing CPC, yeah. Okay. Have you found that, um, do you just, you generally when you're starting off those campaigns, if you're doing CPC, do you just start off real low and kind of work your way up to get the impressions, or has it, I mean... I'm losing you. I don't know if you, can get you could probably, if you stood up here and actually... Just Is it really that... Come so up I after and ask, ask them after. We'll do, we'll do that I, after. I, I Last do question, question, and then we're going to ask them one more question. Uh, hi. Uh, we are a uh, Turkish affiliate network based in Turkey. Uh, I have three questions. Uh, one of them is, uh, you know, when you actually click on application link, uh, it tells you that you are leaving uh, Facebook, and it alerts the user. Uh, what does that do to the conversions, and how we, how, what are the ways to overcome this? I, I apologize, but I can't understand. This, this room has some of the worst acoustics I've ever been in my life. You, you could just come up here and ask the question. And then we'll repeat it so everyone knows it. You know, and I think while you're walking up here, I think a big thing that it seems like we always wait till the end to say, but in your ad copy, you need to do a call to action, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we always, it always like, we're always like, somebody will bring it up and I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We all agree on that. Yeah. But I mean, like, you have to tell people what to do, right? So in your ad copy, I'm always amazed that people never do a call to action. They're just like, oh, this product's great. And then they're never like, check it out now. I mean, like, you need to do a call to action, yep. you know, yep. to get people. Go ahead. We got time for one of your questions. So if you guys go ahead and ask them real quick. So how does clicking on it and getting a notice you're leaving a Facebook affect conversion? Uh, it nails your conversions quite low, so wherever possible, try and make the conversion. Um, when you're clicking off an application, d don't take it off-site. Like, try and keep the conversion on Facebook or take them off-site with the first click. Y you don't want to ride that barrier in between. You're going to get terrible conversions. Go one way or the other. Don't, don't, don't go the middle route. Please come and talk to us, because anyone who can make money in Turkey, we want to talk to you. So come and talk to us afterwards. Same to anyone who makes money in Turkey. All right, so the final two questions, or two things we're looking for each one of you, uh, as many, one or two of the tips as best as you can give to improve conversions, whatever. Go. Actually, <clears throat> one thing that I wanted to talk about just real quick is international. If you're an affiliate marketer, I think there are a lot of great opportunities for testing outside of the U.S. Yes. and outside of English-speaking countries. Um, there's a lot of competition in the U.S., and there'll be more and more and certainly there are um, less barriers to entry testing in UK and uh, Canada and Australia, but there's a lot of good arbitrage opportunities in Western European countries. Um, countries like uh, Poland and Greece in particular are pretty low priced relative to the value of the users. Um, 
and leads you can get from those places. So I would definitely highly recommend testing out some non-US campaigns and um, you know, we use a tool called One Hour Translations to translate a lot of our, our non-US ads, so it's really not that difficult to try stuff outside of the US, and I think, you know, there are some good opportunities to find nice wins pretty easily. Shu? Um, in my opinion, everyone in here could, I mean, like, if you're looking a way to make money on Facebook, I mean, the local space is so easy. You already have relationships with whether it's a dentist or you know somebody who needs customers, right? And so you can just say, like, what would you, what's a new customer worth to you? What age range do you want? Blah, blah, blah. You can target them on Facebook. It's, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. I mean, it's not going to make you $1,000 a day, but it might make you several thousand dollars a month. And then if you could learn how to make it and grow it, um, I think that that is the most open opportunity right now in anything on the internet. I, w I wish we could scale it up to be huge, but um, we mostly just do it for case studies, just showing like again and again just how easy it is to do. So that's my biggest tip um, and probably my only one I have right now because I've kind of already talked about it. So uh, to continue what Jeremy said too, one of the biggest things I learned from him, affiliate networks are not going to like this, but if there's a way you can bypass all these layers of networks where everybody's taking their piece and just go directly to the person who owns the product or even better yet, create your own product to sell, it's going to be a lot easier to get everything to convert and back out and work okay. The other tip is if you're submitting your ads in the evening and they're consistently not getting approved, uh, check and make sure that your pages are viewable from Europe because they're being approved by the Irish office. And if the Irish office can't see it, they're just going to turn them off. That's a really good tip, actually. Great. That a lot of people would be confused about. So uh, I, I would go on Facebook, I'd look what's working well, and I'd copy it. And then I would create intermediate landing pages. So, you know, if you're promoting dating offers or whatever, create a site and like, Enter your information here, and then you pass on. You just pick a site to send it to, and then throw in your your uh, URL into the ads, and then try and track the view throughs. I mean, there's so much value there that no one's actually doing. Well, there are a few people that are doing it, but for the most part, no one is. All right. Well, thanks very much. You guys did a great job. Come on up and uh, ask them questions in person. They'll be up here for a little bit. But uh, thanks very much. Have a great show, everybody. And we got six people here, so. Any questions about Facebook, come ask. Explain that to me. <laughs>